Good morning, avian adventurers. This weekend, my wife and I decided to get away, and we are staying at this cute little cabin near Rocky Mountain House. This area of Alberta is where the boreal forest hits the foothills of the mountains. We're going to be using this as sort of our base camp. We're going to be headed up to Nordeg, which is in the Rocky Mountains. And we also might check out Crimson Lake Provincial Park, which is a really nice provincial park near Rocky Mountain House. So exploring the Nordic area, we have stopped at Abraham Lake, which is an artificial reservoir. It's sort of insta-famous for having these interesting bubbles frozen in the lake. The bubbles are formed from methane gases that are released from decaying plant matter. It's a really cool thing to see, although right now the lake is pretty much covered with snow, so we don't have a ton of view of the bubbles. But still, this is a pretty spectacular place. The mountains are really cool here, so really neat to check it out. One of the best things about any touristy spot in the mountains is being able to get up close and personal with ravens. At these places, they'll often be pretty habituated and let you get pretty close. They are such fantastic birds, and the closer you get, the more you realize just how much of an absolute unit they are. So we're just kind of cruising up the highway here. We are going to explore the Kootenai Plains Ecological Reserve, which is on the banks of the North Saskatchewan River. The mountains look pretty spectacular here, and we're just going to pop into this little place and see if we can see any wildlife or anything else. So we're in a stand of white spruces and there is a large flock of pine siskin, a species of finch. Finch abundance in Calgary has been pretty low this year and I've heard that from quite a few people. So it's pretty interesting going up into the mountains and seeing a lot of finches. I guess they didn't have to come to us if there was plentiful food here. Many finches are what's called eruptive, meaning their abundance and distribution fluctuates each year with patterns of food supply. But they're a really fun bird to watch and they've stuck pretty high up in the canopy. So I'm glad I have my big lens here to get a good view of them. The siskins mostly stayed high in the canopy, but still gave some good views. They didn't stay on any one tree for long, and it took me a moment between each shot to get them lined up. The intensity and frantic pace of their feeding was impressive. Siskins, like Canadians, are renowned for their ability to pack on the pounds during the winter. In the winter, they are about one and a half times as fat as their relative American goldfinch, despite these species having similar lean masses. This is an adaptation, so they have the metabolic reserves needed to respond to cold temperatures. Siskins have the ability to increase their metabolism five times their basal metabolic rate. This allows them to survive in absolutely frigid temperatures up to negative 70 degrees Celsius. Truly amazing feat for such a small bird. So we've stopped at the Bighorn Canyon and I have to say this is pretty impressive. So I'm right at the canyon still, and I happened upon a finch feeding frenzy. There are red crossbills, white wing crossbills, and pine siskin in these trees, and they are going nuts. The red crossbills stuck mostly to the lodgepole pines. There are different types of red crossbills associated with different food sources. These birds sounded like lodgepole pine or type five birds, which makes sense given where I saw them. Among the mixed flock, the white wing crossbills were a bit more numerous and more conspicuous in the trees. It was interesting watching them forage amid tight flocks on the top of the spruces. These gorgeous birds are voracious eaters. Birds hold the cone opposite to the side their lower mandible crosses, but this varies between individuals with about 50% crossing left and 50% crossing right. One of the reasons these birds travel in flocks is so they can work together to rapidly determine which trees have seeds ready for consumption. They do this in part through their calls. When their foraging rate is high, meaning they're finding lots of seeds, they will stay relatively quiet. 
As they consume more seeds and their foraging rate decreases, they will start to call more. More and more birds will start calling. And once this sound reaches a certain crescendo, it is time for the flock to move on to the next tree. Later on, I saw both species of crossbill landing on the ground. They were snacking on that nasty, dirty ice that accumulates around a car's wheel well. Crossbills are known to consume grit. This helps their digestion of all the seeds they eat and also provides them nutrients. Birds have also been shown to eat road salt, and that's what could have been going on here. However, due to the cold temperatures here, road salt is not used that much in Alberta. This behavior allowed me to get some close shots and also allowed me to compare the size and appearance of the two species, but it also made me worry about whether this is a way pollutants enter these birds in an otherwise fairly pristine environment. This morning, we're just gonna stick around the cabin. There is some property to explore, including riverfront of the North Saskatchewan River. Looks like there is a bit of a cattle operation down in the valley below. So might wander around with the cows and see what sort of birds are hanging out down there. So we're exploring the area around the cabin. We happened upon some snow buntings, which was really cool. However, the uh, neighbors have these two dogs, which is nice because they're so beautiful, but uh, they scared away the birds. We checked out the river, which was beautiful and felt pretty safe from the wolves and cougars with these two around. My wife led away the dogs so I could have some time to capture the bunting. I'm trying to get a cow selfie here. Cows are so curious, they can't help themselves. I'd actually like the cows to go back on the other side of the pasture and maybe the snow buntings will come down out of that tree across the way. I guess there's places where the rancher or whoever put out hay bales and that's where the snow buntings seem to be like hanging out, I guess picking up the little seeds that fell out there. I got snow buntings on the left and my new friend's cows on the right. Animals today are making it difficult for me to get close to these birds. The snow buntings are up in the trees in front of me. I'm hoping they'll come down, but uh, yeah, the cows keep getting closer and closer and scaring them away. But I guess I don't really mind. I've had some nice shots, so I actually really like cows. I guess beautiful birds eating weird stuff on the ground is sort of a theme in this video. Buntings are known to go to places where there is manure, and from that they will extract undigested seeds. Yummy. These birds will be headed to the Arctic very soon, with males arriving first in late April. Soon males will molt into their breeding plumage in order to get ready for the breeding season. I thought I saw one or two birds that looked like they might be donning it. I would love to see these birds on their breeding habitat high up in the Arctic someday. I hear the mosquitoes are atrocious though. I was lucky to spend some time up close and personal with these snow buntings. I often see them from country roads, but can't get close to them without trespassing on private property. In the tree behind me, there is a northern pygmy owl. And what's interesting is I believe the snow buntings were sort of mobbing it, sort of flocking in and around it. So that's pretty interesting behavior. Certainly something I've never seen before. It was amazing to see the northern pygmy owl transformation. This bird is looking pretty weird at this point. I love how it just morphed into this creepy goblin. That did not deter the chickadees though. Hopefully it wasn't me that drew their attention, but a group of black-capped chickadees found the owl and started mobbing it. Soon after, it flew off to the safety of some spruces. So here on day two of the trip, I've decided to pop in at Crimson Lake Provincial Park. Now it's late afternoon and the snow has started, so I'm not exactly sure how much wildlife I'll run into, but at the very least, I'll give you some nice views of this beautiful forest. I heard a few birds, but didn't get close to many. But one wildlife species I saw was this red squirrel. It was quite offended by my presence. 
Welp, it's cold and pretty devoid of wildlife out here, so I'm going to be headed back to the warm, toasty cabin. This is a really great weekend exploring this part of Alberta. David Thompson country and Nordegg was new to me, and it was nice visiting Rocky Mountain House in the winter, which is a place that I've spent a lot of time in, but mostly in the summer. I'm glad we could get away and take you along for the ride. Thanks for watching the video and stay tuned for more nature content like this. And until next time, happy birding.